How's everybody today? I guess I should wish you all a, a happy new year. Happy 2023. Uh, but this is this year's funny because we have our reg, our I don't know what you call it normal New Year and then we have our lunar New Year like uh, three weeks later, so it's uh, the two are very close together. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you are looking forward to welcoming the uh, year of the rabbit. And uh, I'm just amazed at how long how fast the year goes by. You know, I'm, I'm sure most of you I, I I'm like most of you I every Nongli Guan and I put up the red. Uh, you know, the lucky thing on my door, you know, and I feel like I I'll just put my one up and then I was looking, I was like, you mean I have to put a new one up already? So, uh, yeah, it seems like the year went by so fast. Um, <clears throat> but anyhow, um, hopefully you're enjoying a good start to the, uh, to the year. And, uh, so we'll start with some articles here today. Um, so anyhow, I thought we, this was the front page, uh, headline for today's Taipei Times article. So I thought we could look at this. It says here, um, delegation lauds longer conscription. Okay. Now, delegation, of course, is a group of people, right? Uh, often we have an official um, uh, group of representatives. They come and visit somebody. Like here, of course, this delegation is visiting Taiwan from overseas. Now, what's the word laud mean? I think we've talked about this before, but what does that mean? Yes. Yeah, it's it's very similar to another word, um, which is uh, applaud. Okay. Now, of course, when you applaud, what does that mean? You clap your hands, right? So, uh, um, you know, you can say applaud. We applaud your. Yeah. Now, of course, if it's a it's a. a means it's applause right you can say the audience gave a great applause for his performance okay so applaud but here you can see this is a l a u d which looks just like that okay so why don't we say this word together laud laud now of course applause you know is you you know people are really clapping their hands this doesn't mean clapping your hands this is really i think the closest word is simply praise Okay, it's me, yeah. So uh, they praised longer conscription. But why don't we say this? You, you can use applaud in that way too. You say, I applaud his achievements or I applaud his success. It might mean you actually clap your hands, but probably not. It probably means you're just praising or you're, 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 you think it's great. You think it's a wonderful thing. But, you know, of course, you could clap your hands. So why don't we say this together? Applaud. Applaud. Of course, that's a verb. Applause. Applause. Right. You can say there was very loud applause in the in the room. Okay. So that's a, a means. And then, of course, this word praise. Praise. Okay. So, um, yeah. So delegation laws or they praise uh, longer conscription. And what's conscription mean? We've talked about this word before. What's a what's conscription? Yeah, it usually means you 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 have to. It's like dang being right. You have to join the army now. And so if you are, if you we say con conscription is just kind of a means for that whole system, right? Right, where the government says, okay, you need to come and spend time in the army. And of course, if you are a military person, uh, like a soldier, uh, and you are one of the you've been you've been asked to serve time in the army, then you are a conscript. Okay, see all uh, this word here, conscript. Okay, so you can say uh, this year we have new mili new conscripts joining the army. Okay, so why don't we say it together, conscription, conscription, and then the the noun that I just mentioned, conscript, conscript. Right. Okay. Now you know sometimes, of course, and we've talked about this before, uh, a very more casual word. It, we talk about the military draft, right? Um, or, but but the draft I think has a slightly different idea to it. Conscription is more of a, a normal system, right? Like everyone has to do it. Whereas I I tend to use the word draft is when it's an emergency. Okay, like uh, in America, all, all men have to young men 18 to 25 have to register. They have to bombing 
for the, we say register for the draft. Now, of course, in peacetime, Americans don't have a draft. But in wartime, uh, then, then young men could be drafted into the military. They could be, you know, at, you know, requested. I mean, there's no choice. You have to go. So the last time the U.S. had an American military had a draft was until 1973, I believe, 72 or 73. Uh, and, of course, that was because of the uh, Vietnam War, U.S. Uh, time. And so up until 1973, uh, there was America had a draft, um, and it's it's interesting because the American draft system is a little bit. They have a priority system, so uh, I don't know exactly how it works, but often they'll say it's almost like a lottery. You know, a lottery like um, uh, yeah. How, how do you say lottery in Chinese? Yeah. So they'll say, okay, if your number is from this number to this number, then you have to go, or you're from this age to this age, you have to go. So they'll. They'll decide, and then it's a priority. If they need more people, they'll, they'll keep picking, keep choosing. Okay, so anyhow, it says National Interest. Project 2049 Institute co-founder Randall Shriver commended Taiwan's defense reforms and said that the group expects more improvements. Okay, so Project 2049, that's the name of an institute. It's a, it's a group. It's like a think tank. Um, uh, what A uh, think tank in Chinese is... Uh, yeah, what is it? This is cool. Yeah, okay. So yeah, it's like a think tank. So co-founder, of course, he founded this with uh, Cheng Li, right? He he founded it with somebody else, Randall Shriver. Now here's a good word: commend. What's commend mean? Uh, sorry. Yeah, laud. It's like laud. So it's like praise or laud or you know commend. You commend someone on their good work. You say the teacher commended his students on their hard work or their high test scores. So commend is also to say, uh, uh, to praise. Now, what word looks just like this word? When you look at this word, uh, w what? Uh, well, comment, but also, let me, there's a word. Yeah. Oops. If you recommend somebody, right? You say, I recommend him for this job. Is it one C? What? I think this is correct. Yeah, I think this is correct. Recommend. Um, so if you give somebody, I'll give you an example. I just had a, a intern, Shi Xingsheng, uh, at my at my uh, company, right? And she's leaving now. She's going overseas. She asked me if I could write her a recommendation letter. Okay. And a recommendation letter says, you know, this person was a good, they were very good as an intern for me. I recommend them for any job. You know, if you want to hire them, I think they're very good. They're, this is why I think they're good. We call that a recommendation letter. Okay, very common. Uh, if maybe you work with somebody and they're there, and then later on they leave and they go somewhere else, they ask you for a recommendation letter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's no draft in the United States. Yeah, before, up until 1973, there was a draft. And in the future, if there was a war, there could be a draft again. But right now, because there's no serious war, big war, major war, then there's no draft. No, no, no. Draft is if anybody like me and you and anybody, they say, okay, you, you need to join the army. Yeah. Yeah. You're not a professional soldier. Yeah. Or we say volunteer soldier. Yeah. Volunteer soldier means I, I decide that I want to join. Yeah. I volunteer. So, okay. So let's say this word together, recommend, recommend, and then recommendation, recommendation. Right, so recommend is a verb. I recommend him for this job. But recommendation is a noun, or you could even use it as a xingongsu. You could say a rec like a recommendation letter, then it turns into a xingongsu. But you can say, I gave. Often we say, I gave him my recommendation. It means I 
I am recommending him to somebody else. I rec I gave him my recommendation. Okay, so we say it that way. Um, that's something we give out, just like you give out praise. You give praise to people. I give my recommendation. So this is a very good word, and you can see it's very similar to that word commend, which is to praise. Okay. So he commended Taiwan's defense reforms. And what's a reform? Yeah, it's something you change, right? Like, a, well, in Chinese, I think, gaiko, right? It's a, it's a change, right? So defense reforms. Often we talk about educational reforms or social reforms or defense reforms. or There's all kinds of reforms. Okay, so he said the group, that's his group, expects more improvements. They, they hope there's other improvements. Okay. So let's go on and read this article and see what's going on. So here he says, uh, Taiwan has made a tough yet appropriate decision by extending the duration of conscription from four months to one year amid increasing military threats from China. A delegation from the Project 2049 Institute said yesterday. Okay, so they're saying that Taiwan has made a tough you know, often we have tough decisions in life. We make tough or difficult decisions, but appropriate. They say it's appropriate. What does appropriate mean? Suitable, yeah. It's the right thing. What? what? The right thing, yeah, the good thing. Um, proper, yeah, proper would be a good word. Um, so, so, you know, appropriate, you know, we talk about appropriate decisions here, but we could also say uh, appropriate um for example, I went to an event the other day. Um, uh, actually, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know if you, maybe one or two of you saw this, but um, for the, uh, at Shi Zhengfu, I was invited with some Mei Guo Shanghui Li Shi to join the Mayor Lu, Lu Shizhang to do the calligraphy. <laughs> you know, calligraphy uh, for the New Year, Guonian. So uh, all the Meiti was there. And, but before we went there, I was messaging my other uh, board members, and we tried to decide what would be our appropriate outfit, clothing, dress. What's the appropriate dress? So I asked them, I said, are you going to dress up? Are you going to wear a suit? Are you going to, what are you going to wear? Are you going to wear a tie? You know, and so we were discussing our appropriate, the appropriate dress or appropriate clothing for that event. Okay, what is appropriate? Or we could say proper. So if you look at somebody and you say, he is dressed appropriately for this occasion, that means he's wearing the right clothing for this occasion, right? So if your friend has a, a, a beach party, you know, at the Haipian, and you show up wearing a Xi Zhuang, then you are dressed uh, inappropriately, right? Okay, it's not appropriate, okay? But here we, it's appropriate. So why don't we say it together, appropriate. Appropriate. Now, of course, the opposite, we add an I-N in the front. So we say, let's say it together, inappropriate inappropriate okay so they made a tough yet inappropriate decision by extending of course extend means to what to prolong yeah that's a good word to make longer now prolong is usually a word that we use for time okay if we prolong something we make it longer so that prolong is made is is for time specifically but extend could be used for anything. For example, when I do this, I'm extending my arm. I'm putting it out. I'm extending it. Now, we would not say I prolong my arm. I can't say that. Prolong is only for time. So I can extend my arm. I can extend my time. I can extend anything. But prolong is just for time. So let's say together, extend. Extend. And then that other word there, prolong. Prolong. Okay. And of course, if you if something is going on for a long time, we can turn that into a shinongse. It can be prolonged, uh, p o r l o n g e d. Okay, so you could say he went through a prolonged time in the hospital. Okay, he was it was a long time there. Okay, you know you can think about it. Pro means put you know for, and long means long. So prolong means longer. Yeah. Yes. Protracted is, yes, that's a very similar word. And also for time. So we say protracted. Okay. Protracted, you could say a protracted time in the hospital or protracted uh, studies or in anything that's been extended. Uh, you could say lengthened, right? Lengthened is, is to make longer. Yeah. So 
So anyhow, why don't we say that too? Protracted. Protracted. Okay. So let's go back to this. It says they made the right decision by extending the duration. Now here's another good word. I don't think we've learned this. What does duration mean? Yeah. So what would be a simple, simple word for this? Period. Yes, a period. The period of conscription, a, a length of time, okay? So we say the duration. What is the duration of your class? You could say, well, it's about uh, two hours, okay? So why don't we say it together? Duration. Duration. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's good. Um, it, it's, that's a good word. So they extended the duration of conscription from four months to one year. And uh, amid, of course, amid, we've talked about this before, means like in the middle of, amidst. Sometimes, we, sometimes this word can be used as A-M-I-D-S-T, amidst. Amidst, amid, similar word, okay? So you could say amidst or amid increasing military threats from China, uh, this delegation said. Okay, any questions? Uh, okay, so let's go on and read this. Taiwan has made a tough... Tough, yet appropriate decision by extending the duration of conscription from four months to one year amid increasing military threats Threats from China. A delegation from the Project 2049 Institute Institute said yesterday. Okay. Yes. Yet. You're saying this? Yeah, it's like but. Yeah. So we could say, uh, right now I'm hap tired yet happy. I'm tired but happy. Okay. Or someone can say, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, what, am, what, what are, I'm hungry yet uh, eh, what are, sleepy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's many words. So it's like but. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on. It says, uh, leaders have to make tough decisions, and we noted the decision on extending the terms of service for conscripts in Taiwan. We know those things are not easy. However, given the threats that you face, it seems appropriate, and we applaud your leadership on defense reform that has already been announced. We also expect more to come on defense reform. Institute Chairman Randall Shriver, former U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense for Indo-Pacific Security Affairs, told President Tsai Ing-wen during a meeting at the presidential office in Taipei. Okay, this guy Randall Shriver is pretty well known. He's a, he's a, he, f he often comments on Taiwan, uh, China affairs, but he has a very long former title. U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense. You know, Secretary of Defense would be like the Guofang Bu Bu Zhang, right? But this is Assistant Secretary of Defense for what? Indo Pacific, uh, what would it be? Yeah, yeah, in, in Thai, right? Uh, Pacific Security Affairs. So it's a very long title. Um, so, anyhow, but he's a former. He's not current. He doesn't do this now. Former means, of course, before. Okay? We could say, uh, uh, Jason Hu, Hu Zhichang, is the former mayor of Taichung City. Okay, so leaders have to make tough decisions, and we noted, means we've, we've noticed, when we say we noted, we've noticed, uh, we've noted the decision on extending, making longer, the, the terms of service, the term of service. Now, of course, the term of service, term again is like period, the term. Like you can say a school term, right? What's, how long is your school term? Someone would say, well, it's eight months or six months. Okay. Now, of course, if we said the terms of service, then the word it would the meaning would change completely. If we added an S here, when what does that mean then? 
the the conditions. Yeah, it means like the tiao the 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 conditions. The the um, for example, the terms of my employment. When you join a company, maybe you will have a contract, a hou yue. That's your terms of your employment. It means terms with an s means like the conditions. The 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 um, the guidelines, you know, the the tiao jian or whatever of your your employment. But of course, term with no s means just like a period, a period of time. So the term of service means the period of time of service from four conscripts in Taiwan. Okay, uh, yeah, and then we've already talked about these other words. So let's read this. Leaders have to make tough decisions, and we noted the decision on. Extending the term of service for conscripts in Taiwan. Okay, so here's the word conscript. Shen has been turned into conscript. With a, this is a person. We know those things are not easy. However, given the threats you face. It seems appropriate, appropriate, and we applaud your leadership on defense reform that has already been announced. We also expect more to come. On defense reform, Institute Chairman Randall Shriver former U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense for Indo-Pacific Security Affairs. Told President Tsai Ing-wen during a meeting at the presidential office in Taipei. Okay, now let me I just、uh, remind you of something here. Here it says, "Given the threats you face." When we say "given something," what does that mean? Yeah, it means under these circumstances, under this qing kuang,、uh, or you could simply say because of the threats you face. But when we say given something, it means in this current situation, like he says, under the conditions, the current conditions. So given,、uh, you could say,、uh, given the、uh, warm weather today, I decided to、uh, not wear a jacket or something like that. So it means because of or under these conditions. Okay, so given something. Okay.、Um, So it says here, Shriver also lauded Taiwan's achievements over the past two years, including controlling its COVID-19 outbreak, helping Ukrainian refugees in Poland, and withstanding the increasing military threat from China. Okay, so again, he's praising Taiwan's achievements over. Okay, so controlling COVID-19, of course, we know that、uh, Ukrainian, you know, Ukraine. What's a refugee? Yeah, someone who's run away from something else. You know, sometimes we have refugees from war. We have political refugees. We have、uh, economic refugees. People who are just running, leaving their country to go somewhere else or stay somewhere else. So why don't we say it? We're together, refugees. Refugees. Yeah, and refugee is usually looking or seeking. They're seeking refuge, right? They're looking for a place. A refuge is a place of safety, of protection. Okay, you're you, as well. You could say asylum. Although not all refugees are looking for asylum. Sometimes they're some are. I mean, many are, I guess. But yeah, refuge. We could say we took refuge from the storm inside. It means we were looking for shelter in this from the storm inside the building. But refugee, of course, usually means someone who's running away from something. Okay, so these are Ukrainian refugees. In Poland, they went to Poland. Okay, 
and withstanding the increasing military threat from China. Now, what's to withstand? What does to withstand mean? Yeah, to go through something, to to resist, but also to uh, put up with, or I guess a, a word that I might use would be kind of like the word to endure, you know, endure. If you are facing something that's difficult and you you stick with it, you go through it, you, 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 you uh, yeah, you say, I endured that difficult time, I withstood that difficult time, or I withstood the opposition. Sometimes withstand is the idea that someone is against you, fandueni, they're opposing you, and you withstand them, you stand strong against them. So to withstand something means to stand firmly or strongly against something, okay? So why don't we say together, uh, withstanding, withstanding. So of course Taiwan is withstanding, they're standing against or standing strongly against the increasing military threat from China, so yeah, okay? So let's read this then. Shriver also lauded Taiwan's achievements. Achievements over the past two years, including controlling its COVID-19 outbreak. Outbreak. Helping Ukrainian refugees, Ukrainian refugees in Poland and withstanding the increasing military threat from China. Right. Okay. That's a photo caption. So it says here, these are difficult challenges, but Tai has shown that she is capable of defending Taiwan's sovereignty, national interests, and values that Taiwanese have been working hard to preserve, he said. What is to preserve? Yeah. To preserve. You know, there's a lot of words that are very similar to this, like what? They're, they're, not the, they're not exactly the same words, but we have conserve, reserve, yeah. I think maybe these two are the closest. Conserve, preserve, and reserve. Okay, so reserve has, a preserve means to, to save up, right? To kind of to keep, to, to maintain. I guess that's a good word, to maintain, right? Um, to kind of to, to protect and maintain, to keep something. So you can preserve, of course, uh, Taiwan's uh, interests, national interests and values, and preserve Taiwan's sovereignty. Obviously, most countries want to preserve, to protect, to maintain their sovereignty. It means they control their own territory. This is their land. This is, the, this is theirs, not someone else's. Um, you can preserve your freedom, right? If you have freedom or independence, to li or zuyo, you want to preserve that. You want to keep it. You want to keep but uh, it's funny, this word gets used, um, uh, in Taiwan I don't see this a lot, but, but my father's home area in Pennsylvania, Bingzhou, every year uh, in the, I think the fall, um, they, in the in the the Shiho, they, people will bring in, that's when all the fruits and vegetables come in, you know, the Shui Guo, they will actually preserve fruit and vegetables, right? And, and, and what they do is they, I think they boil it, and then they, they can it. They call it canning. Although sometimes when they say can, C-A-N, they don't actually use a, a tong. They use a jar, glass jar, and they will seal it. And it's protected. It's preserved. And you can keep it for a very long time. Uh, you can put it out. You can keep it for a year maybe. And it's okay. When you open it, you can still eat it. Um, it's, so they preserve it. So um, sometimes when you buy these, we say preserved fruit, you know, shui guo. It's like, uh, it looks a little bit, sometimes it looks a little bit like guojiang, but sometimes it, you can see the fruit in there. But anyhow, we say fruit preserves. It, it can be a mingzi or dongzi. But anyhow, what we're doing is we're saving and keeping, protecting this fruit or vegetables. Okay? So we say preserved fruit. You know, I don't know. I'm not an... <laughs> I, I, I think they, they boil it and then 
maybe they add, well, I mean, one way to preserve fruits and vegetables is to pickle them. You know, in Taiwan, we have, I know we have also like different kinds of, uh, is it, yeah, how do you call it? Like pickled fruit, what, what or pickled vegetable, you would, yeah, like uh, radish, yeah, pickled radish, you know. In Japanese, what do they say, dai, dai kong, or dai kong, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it's pickled, so you can keep it. But, but preserved fruit is not always pickled. Sometimes it is pickled. Actually, if we use a shingong, so we say pickled, okay. Um, I think you do, because it has that kind of vinegar flavor to it, yeah. But, um, but, not, but when I think of preserved fruit or vegetables, it's not usually pickled. It, they use other techniques to do it, but yeah. So anyhow, that's, that's something. But anyhow, we have preserve, but then we have conserve is more like the word, we've talked about this before, conserve is more like the word to save. Yeah, you, like you conserve energy, you conserve water, you conserve uh, electricity. It means to kind of save it. You're not wasting it, right? You want to conserve energy. You know, of course, today we, we don't want to waste energy. So we conserve. And reserve means to kind of like to put aside, right? Like if I go to a restaurant, I want them. I want to reserve a seat. I want to reserve a table. It means please hold that for me. I want to keep that for me. Okay. So I want to reserve. Means I kind of put it aside to save it for someone to use. Okay. So um, yeah. What else do we reserve? Um, well, we could reserve money. Uh, yeah, we could put money aside. You know, to save it. Uh, we could also conserve money. Right. We want to, we don't want to waste money. We want to conserve our money. A reservoir, yeah. So, you know, if in Taiwan and many places we have a, re now this is spelled different. It has an R there. Uh, reservoir is like a, what, shui ku, right? Yeah. So, it, but what they do, they, what did they save? Water. Yeah, it holds water so that we can use it later. Okay. A reservoir. That's R E S E R V O I R. Yeah, reservoir. It's a kind of an unusual word. So, anyhow, let's say these words together. Um, preserve. Preserve. Conserve. Conserve. Reserve. Reserve. Uh, and then this word, reservoir. Reservoir. And then why don't we say this one too? Pickled. Pickled. Yeah. Do, do you like pickles? Like, okay. Some friends don't like pickles, but uh, my sister hates pickles. Um, so whenever she went to Mai Dan La, McDonald's, and they order a hanbao, she always opens up the burger and takes all the pickles out, right? Because they often put pickles in the hamburger, hanbao. So she's always taking them out. She used to always ask me, do you want my pickles? So yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, but, you know, in America, I don't know about Taiwan, but when we eat pickles, you know, the, what is it, xiao huang gua, you know, the, yeah. Um, th that's a particular kind of pickle, right? But when Americans think of pickles, they always think of xiao huang gua pickles, they, and they slice it, right? Just like you put inside the hanbao. But um, in America, we have sweet pickles, and we have, um, well, you could say sour, you know, sour but another way of people say they call them dill pickles, because dill is a kind of xiang uh, liao. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a. They they put in with the pickles and it gives it kind of a swan swan the flavor. Okay, so if you hear someone say dill pickles, it has that flavor. Of course, sweet pickles are are, I think, easier to like. People like sweet pickles, but many people don't like the. Some people do. Some people love them. The dill pickles. They have this kind of swan swan the flavor to them uh, when you eat them. Um, yeah, you, <laughs> there's a big difference. Sauerkraut. Yeah, sauerkraut is like the guo swan cai. It's got a funny name, a funny way of the German spelling. Of Word. Yeah, I like it. So sour, S A U E R K R A U T, sauerkraut is a German word, but it's it's like uh, uh, swan's high, like uh, cabbage. Yeah, German style, Duguo. 
So, you know, I'll tell you where you used to get a lot of swan chai was if you went to Hao Shi Duo in their food court, uh, when you ordered like a ruko, they always had this big bucket of swan chai there for free. But now it's gone. They don't, I don't think they give it away for free. But it was very funny because that swan chai, you're supposed to put it on your ruko. But I would go to Hao Shi Duo Costco in Taiwan and I would see everybody just eating it. Uh, they would just put a big plate of it and they would eat it. But yeah, you're supposed to put it on your ruko. That's why they put it there. So I think that's why they took it away. They're like, okay, swanna. Um, so why don't we say it together, sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Yeah, and the, the pronunciation of this is the same, sour. It's the same, yeah, sauerkraut. Yeah, uh-huh. Right. Tangy? Tangy. Tangy is a little bit like swan swan tian tian de wei dao. Swan tian de wei dao. So if you eat like oranges, oranges often have a very tangy flavor to them. Tangy. Actually, there's no ge. We don't say ge. We say tangy. Tangy. So, yeah. So if it's uh, like a sweet, sour flavor, especially like I think of uh, citrus fruit, like oranges and lemons, uh, limong and... Uh, I don't know if it comes from that word, but yeah. Actually, I don't think tangerines are related to this word. Tangerines actually come from the, I think they, the name comes from the city in Morocco called Tangiers. Uh, I think that's spelled correctly. But in Morocco, you know, North Africa. Uh, actually, tangerines are in Taiwan what we call a jujitsu, the big ones. You know, right now at the supermarket, and the skin is very loose. You can peel it very easily. That's a tangerine. Uh, whereas the ones you have to cut, those are like oranges. In America, that's what we call them. So anyhow, let's say this word together. Tangy. Tangy. Right. So if you like oranges or lemons, you know that's a tangy flavor. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, article. Um, we talked about preserving Taiwan's sovereignty. Okay, you know what sovereignty means, right? Sovereign means you have power. So sovereignty over your means you have the authority, the power over your land, over your country. So sovereignty. Why don't we say it together? Sovereignty. Sovereignty. Okay. So let's read this together. These are difficult challenges. Challenges. But Tsai has shown that. She is capable of defending Taiwan's sovereignty, national interests, and values. That Taiwanese have been working hard to preserve, he said. Okay, so Tai told the delegation that Taiwan would improve the content and capacity of conscript training in addition to extending the duration of mandatory military service. Okay, now content means, we've talked about this before, basically content means what? What's inside? Nei uh, rong, right? Okay, so the content... Now, of course, the content of training means what, what do you do in your training? What, what's, what do you do? I mean, do you do you uh, Saudi or do you actually go out and do something? Okay, so content and a capacity. You, yeah, how many people you can. Capacity means how many you can hold, right? So I'll give you an example. In Taiwan, if you go outside and you look at a, a bus, public bus, right? On the door, I notice there's a little letter and it says, in Chinese, it says capacity like 40 people or 48 people. It'll tell you how many people can legally <laughs> uh, go in this bus, okay? Uh, sometimes we say max, M-A-X, or maximum capacity. means what's the most people that can be inside this bus? Or we could say what's the capacity of this room, right? So how many people can, can this room hold, okay? So why don't we say together capacity, capacity. Yes.
is what? Taiwanese? No. Taiwanese? Why why would it be a bad word? No? Taiwanese? Like Taiwan Ren. No. No, I've never heard that. No, no, it's a totally normal word. Yeah. So yeah. Um so yeah, I, I don't know where that would come from. So yeah. Uh, no, I, I think people in Taiwan should be proud to be called Taiwanese. So yeah. Um what? I don't know. I've never heard that. So yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, in fact, you know, it was very interesting. I was giving a lecture on Saturday to a group of eleven American university students who are visiting Taiwan for three weeks. So you know, during Yiching, they couldn't come here for three years. They couldn't come here. Uh, but my friend is a Jiao uh, a Jiao Jiao Shou. Yeah. So every two years, she would bring a group of American university students to spend about three weeks in Taiwan. And they go all around Taiwan um, and visit different uh, places, not just for fun. They go there to talk to universities, like they were up at Donghai, they were out at uh, Zhongguo Yiao Da Xue, uh, and they learn about Taiwan culture. So I give them a lecture on Taiwan culture. You know, you know, I do a lot of culture, right? History and culture. But I was telling them that when I was uh, when I was growing up in Taiwan, of course. As foreigners, why Korean? We would always refer to people in Taiwan as Chinese. But I said today, if you use that word, you might get in trouble. <laughs> Someone might tell you, so no, 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 we're you know we're different. So anyhow, yeah, Taiwanese is a very common word. So yeah, okay. I think because people want to distinguish themselves from people in China. Okay. Now, of course, the word Chinese is a very broad word. It could mean Huaren, right? You could say racially. Racially, like we say, you know, racially, people are Chinese in Taiwan, or most people, not all, but yeah. But as nationality, in terms of nationality, yeah, it's different. So anyhow, it's complicated. <laughs> That's what I told him. It's very complicated. And Fuzha, right? Yeah. Yeah. We don't call them British. Yeah, and we don't even say British Americans. Because it was it was so long ago. In fact, I've never heard that term before. Actually, no. I guess you could say if someone recently immigrated from England to America, you could call them a British American recently. Um, but but it's funny uh, because we still call we still refer to Americans even if it came from a long long time ago. We still say Irish Americans or Scottish Americans uh, for some reason. But I very seldom hear British America unless they just. They came to America more recently from from England, or yeah, we say British Americans, but yeah, it's not a very common term. We wouldn't say that. Yeah. Well, yeah, oh, but but again, in America, we do distinguish. We say Chinese American, Taiwanese American, Japanese American, Irish American. Some people don't care. They don't. They don't. They don't wear that label. They don't put that label on themselves. They just say I'm American. But some people do. Um, I have friends that are very very proud to be Irish. Americans, okay, so yeah, so every year, you know, they in uh, it's coming up. San Yue Fun, March 17 is St. Patrick's Day, yeah. And in America, it's St. Patrick's Day. It doesn't matter if you're Irish American or not. You're supposed to wear what color? Green. Yeah, I've told you this before. Some people they it's kind of a joke, but if you on that day if you don't wear green, what happens? You know? Yeah, they pinch you. You know, pinch, P-I-N-C-H. You know, you pinch someone. So on that day, if you're not wearing green, someone can pinch you. Okay. Well, yeah, maybe not. Maybe if be careful if it's a woman. Better not do that. If it, yeah, yeah. But yeah, maybe a man you can pinch them. What? I, it's just a joke. Like you're not wearing green, so yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's read this again. Oh, th you're supposed to pinch hard. You're supposed to make them hurt. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. It's their fault. Time of the toll, right? Okay. Okay. So let's read this. Uh, Tsai told the delegation that Taiwan would improve the content and capacity. 
capacity of conscript training. In addition to extending the duration of mandatory military service. Right. So, so really, this term, mandatory military service, is the same as the word conscription, really. It's the same idea, right? Conscription is mandatory military service. And of course, We've studied that word before. Mandatory means you have to, right? So, for example, uh, someone, you know, in Taiwan, my friends, my American friends, they went to the public swimming pool, and they were they were shocked that wearing a swim cap was mandatory, okay? Because, you know, in America, if you go to a swimming pool, you can sleep in. You, you just jump in. You don't have to wear a swimming cap. But in Taiwan, many swimming, or most swimming pools say you have to wear a swimming cap, okay? Because I guess, What? All the pools, yeah, maybe it's a government law. So we say a swimming cap is mandatory at the swimming pool. Okay, you have to. Well, necessary means kind of like we should, but mandatory means you have to. There's no choice. Okay, so why don't we say it together, mandatory. Mandatory. Okay, yeah, so if you go to many places, you'll see a sign that says this, such, whatever, blah, 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 is mandatory. You know, like wearing shoes is mandatory or wearing a, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, they're, they're used in America, some restaurants, sometimes a high, a nicer restaurant, they'll, they'll have a sign. It's kind of funny. It says, no shoes, no service. It means if you don't wear shoes in the store restaurant, we won't serve you. So because they want you to wear nicer clothes. You can't sleep in, wear tosh here. Um, yeah. Or slant, no sanders or slip. That's very, it's not common, but yeah, it, yeah. Either one is fine. So, so that's actually a good point, is another word that's very similar is, uh, let me add another page here, uh, compulsory. Now, in Taiwan, this word gets used often in another way. We say that in, Amer in Taiwan, uh, public education is compulsory until, what, junior high school? High school, senior high school, okay, means that all young people, all children have to go to school. They can't not go to school. So they all, we say edu compulsory education. Everyone has to go to school. So why don't we say together compulsory. Compulsory. Right, okay. So let's go on here. It says, as Taiwan is on the front line of democracy, we understand that we can protect freedom and democracy, ensure national security and regional peace and stability only by bolstering our self-defense capability as well as social and economic resilience, Tai said. Okay, there's a couple words here. Frontline, I think you know, is the uh, frontline. In Chinese, you say they... Qian Xian, right? Front line. Like in a war, often, well, usually we have a front line. So front line of democracy. We understand we can protect freedom and democracy. Okay, ensure, of course, means to make sure uh, or to protect national security and regional peace and stability. What stability mean? Yeah, making something stable, right? You want it to be, you know, when being the is safe, stable. Why don't we say it together? Stability. Stability. Right, so we say most people want their to have financial stability. They want their, their money their, to be stable, okay? Only by bolstering it. Maybe we've learned this word before, but what is another word for bolster? Boost, but I think a better word would be to strengthen. Uh, yeah, I think I'm spelling that right, yeah. Strengthen, yeah. So to strengthen, to bolster, to make stronger. Okay, so why don't we say it together, bolstering, bolstering. Okay, strengthening or bolstering our self-defense capability. Now, of course, capability, you look at the word, it looks like ability, capability means we are able, our nangli, our able, ability to do something. Let's say it one more time, capability, capability. And then she says, as well as social 
you know, our society and economic resilience. And, and this is a good word. What is resilience? Yeah, it means your, your, uh, your ability to keep going, to be strong, yeah, to persevere. So, yeah, actually, that's a good word. Um, it's very similar. Uh, perseverance. Is it ANC? Yeah, I think that's right. Perseverance. Yeah. Okay. So persevere. To persevere, if you had an E here, persevere means to keep going, right? To continue, to maintain, to keep going. Or we could say resilient means that it's, it doesn't break. It keep it's strong, so you know resilience. Really, I mean, at a very very basic level, resilience could be like strength as well. Okay, so so for example, when I think of resilience, I think of uh, you know, like for example, there are some trees that are very resilient. Even in a very strong typhoon, they will not fall over. They will not break. That even though they they might they might bend, but they are very strong. They won't fall. So we say that that or the buildings like Taiwan has lots of earthquakes, right? So it is our goal, our hope to build resilience. Now this is a mingzi, but if we want to turn this into a dongzi, uh, sorry, if we want to turn this into a xingongzi, this becomes a t, resilient, right? Resilient is a xingongzi. So we can say Taiwan builds, most of Taiwan's buildings are very resilient. They don't fall over in earthquakes, okay? Yeah, uh, you were saying, yeah. Reinforce, but yeah, reinforce to strengthen, yeah, to make stronger, yeah, it's all the same idea. So yeah, um, why don't we say this word together, resilience, resilience, and then as a xingong, so with a T, resilient, resilient, yeah, it's a good word. Okay, so they want to make their economy and society strong, basically that's what it means, make the economy and society strong. Okay, so let's read this. As Taiwan is on the front line, front line of democracy, we understand that we can protect freedom and democracy, ensure national security, security, and regional peace, and stability only by bolstering, bolstering our self-defense capability, as well as social and economic Resilience, Tsai said. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, let's read a couple more paragraphs and then we'll go to a different story. So it says, we look forward to working more closely with our democratic allies to jointly defend our faith and values, she said. Uh, Taiwan and the U.S. have been important trading and strategic partners, and Washington has fulfilled its security commitment to Taipei by announcing arms sales to Taiwan, Tai said. Okay, so working closely, we look forward to, means, what's another word for we look forward to? What, what, would, what would be another way to say that? What? Expect, but there's even a better word. Starts with an A. Yes, an, yeah, anticipate. Uh, if you look forward to something, we you can say we anticipate. We 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 we're, yeah, it's we're looking forward to something. So why don't we say it together? We uh, sorry, anticipate. 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 So she could say we anticipate working more closely instead of we look forward to. We anticipate working more closely with our democratic allies, you know, our friends to jointly. Of course, jointly means together, right? Jointly together. Uh, defend our faith and values. Now, it's interesting she used the word our faith because in, in America, normally when you talk about your faith, it's talking about something very different. Religion, yeah. 
you can say uh, uh, my, my faith. It could be any religious faith, but it means your religious belief. I don't think that's what she means here. Uh, of course, that maybe means their faith in, I don't know, freedom or uh, democratic values. What? Yeah, believing, yeah, but believing in what? So I think, it, yeah, she's, of course, we're talking about democracy and freedom and sovereignty. So I think believing in those things. But yeah, normally if someone says uh, um, he has a very strong faith or a protector, if we use the word by itself, often it's talk not always, but often it's talking about religious beliefs. Okay, Re yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, but Shin Shin isn't more like confidence, right? I think it's like the word confidence, like I have confidence in this. But faith is more like a belief, a belief in something. Not a confidence, but a belief. Okay, so our faith and values. Okay, um, and then, of course, Taiwan and the U.S. have been important trading and strategic. Strategic, of course, means like in a, in a big global planning cooperation. Strategic partners. And Washington has fulfilled, okay, it's met. Sometimes we can simply say, use the word M-E-T, met. We've met our commitment or, yeah, fulfilled is a good word. Fulfilled its security commitment to Taiwan by announcing arms sales. Okay. Yeah. They, they've announced arms sales, but I think they need to do, America needs to do a better job of delivering the weapons, not just announcing the weapon sales. So, yeah, I've been talking to my friends about that a lot. Um, okay. Uh, Let's read this together then. We look forward to working more closely. Working more closely with our democratic allies to jointly defend our faith and values, she said. Yes. What do you mean withstand the loss? I mean, well, yeah. Yeah, but you're saying at a presidential and congressional level, you're saying that could that be acceptable? Is that what you mean? Would it be acceptable? I, I think it would be very, very, very difficult. Uh, I think that there would be a lot of enormous amount of pressure for the U.S. to stand with Taiwan, to protect Taiwan, uh, because this has been discussed for so long and talked about for so long and so publicly, right? This is not some private discussion. This is something that is in the front of our, one of the issues that is in front of our, our national discussion, right? And when you talk about something publicly and nationally for a very long time, you can't just say, ah, swan, that doesn't matter, or it doesn't really mean anything, or it's not important. No, it's very important. So I think that when, and that's why I think it's always good when Taiwan becomes a, a important issue for the United States. My, my fear for a very long time, not even recently, but for a very long time, my fear for, Ty for America and the world is when people don't care, when in Taiwan is, doesn't matter, or, or people don't understand the importance of Taiwan. That's when it's dangerous for Taiwan because nobody cares. They're just like, ah, whatever, Taiwan's just an island, who knows, whatever. But, but when it becomes a big point of discussion for everybody, then it's good because people are paying attention and they're talking about it. And it's, so that's why, you know, recently, um, I, I don't, I'm sure you've probably noticed recently, especially since Nancy Pelosi came to Taiwan, there's been this nonstop visits by European and American uh, members of their, you know, like their kind of like their Congress or parliament or LIFA, you know, that kind of thing. You know, right now there's a group from Germany and Lithuania and I mean, there's like three different groups here right now 
from from different groups like uh, like we say lawmakers, representatives from different countries. And you know, last week there was other groups, and you know, and I heard there's more. It seems like every week there's a new group coming to Taiwan. That's good. That's good for Taiwan because it means that people care about Taiwan. They want to support Taiwan, and it's it's a discussion that everyone cares about. If they didn't care about Taiwan or they didn't come here, or they weren't talking about Taiwan, then it wouldn't be important to them, or 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 something could happen to Taiwan and nobody would say much. It would be no big deal. But I think that's why it's good that Taiwan has been put up front in everybody's thinking. It's a very very important issue, global issue, not just America. So and of course I'm not and and it, rightfully so. It it is Taiwan is important to the world, um, and not just. Because of Tai Chi Dian, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, not just because of that. That's obviously that is important to the world economy. But I think Taiwan represents much more than that. Taiwan is important to uh, America and Japan and Asia strategically. It's important economically. It's important democratically. It's important in many, many different ways. And so I think it's good that people are talking about it. So yeah. Again, if people didn't care. Then Taiwan would be in trouble. No, the people around the world, if they don't care, then Taiwan's in trouble. But if everybody cares, that's good for Taiwan and Taiwanese. So, yeah, yeah, Taiwan's very, very important. But, but you know, it's funny when I was talking to these students, I pointed out something very, very interesting. Um, I, I've told you this before. Um, for the 21st century, uh, we say semiconductors, bandauti, is the oil of the 21st century, right? In the 20th, 20th century, the global economy ran on oil. Oil was very important, okay? And what, what did America spend a lot of time protect, protecting Saudi Arabia, you know, Saudi Arabia and Zhongdong because oil was so important to the global economy, right? Okay, so think about this. At its peak, Saudi Arabia produced 17% of the world's oil. 17%. Okay. OPEC, you know OPEC, OPEC, O P E C. Okay. OPEC produces something like 55% of the world's oil today, globally. Okay. Uh, they're responsible. I think that's the correct number. Today, Haiti uh, Dian alone. Produces, I think, actually no, 50, I don't know if this is numbers. This number may be wrong, but anyhow, Taiji Dan produces. No, I think actually this number is wrong. But anyhow, it's it's a high number, but it's not that high. I think it's Taiji Dan produces 55 percent of the world's semiconductors, contract chips, and it produces 90 plus percent of the world's top end semiconductors. So think about that. Saudi Arabia made 17 percent. Produced of the world's oil, in Taiwan, Taiji Dian, one company. We're not even producing, including Lian Dian or any of the other companies. Produces 55 percent of the world's contract. You know, contract. Uh, they mean they have a factory and they make it for somebody. Contract manufactured chips and over 90 percent of the world's high-end semiconductors. So you can understand Taiwan. If you want to look at it that way, if Ta if semiconductors are the oil of the 21st century then Taiwan is much, much, much more important than Saudi Arabia for, for, for the global economy. So again, I don't want to overemphasize this because Taiwan is much, much more than semiconductors, right? Uh, and I do believe that, that people support Taiwan not just because of Bandauti. That's not the only reason. If you look at this article here, they're not talking about semiconductors. We haven't even mentioned semiconductors, okay? That's not even here on this discussion. Uh, but I just want to point that out, how important Taiwan is to the global economy. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty amazing thing. I mean, I'm very proud of Taiwan because uh, when I was in, uh, I'll t I'll, I think I told you this, when I was in high school uh, or late high school, university, around in the late 1980s, Fashion and Dai, I still remember I heard Taiwan Zhongyang Zhengfu was going to have this new plan. They're going to make high tech in Taiwan. And, and my re reaction was I, I laughed, well, xiao, <laughs> because I was like, nah, Taiwan can't do high tech, right? They're making shoes and clothing, and how can they do high tech? Well, look at Taiwan today, right? Look at what they're doing, this, you know? 
So that's pretty amazing. I, I think it's, uh, it's an amazing achievement for Taiwan to, to do that. And of course, this is not the only thing Taiwan has done. The best thing Taiwan has done is democracy, I think. You know, Mingzhu. That's a great achievement for Taiwan. That's an even bigger achievement than this. So I, I think that, um, yeah, this is, this is what we're talking about. Um, okay, uh, let's read this then. I don't think we've read this yet. Taiwan and the U.S. have been important trading and strategic partners. Strategic partners. And Washington has fulfilled its security commitment to Taipei by announcing arms sales to Taiwan, Tsai said. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go to a different article. This is all just talking about the uh, different stuff. Any questions on this article, though, before we go on? Yeah. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. We could say, what's the capacity of this bottle? Is two liters, you know. Uh, we could say, we could even say his capacity to solve problems. So capacity can also be another word for ability, Nang Li, right? He has great capacity for thinking, uh, for, for, yeah, solving problems, or he has a great capacity for uh, fixing cars, okay? It means he has a great ability for fixing cars. So that word capacity, it, it's a very good word. It's a broad word that we can use for a lot of different things, everything from this room to someone's mind and their brain. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So let's go on uh, to a different article. Um. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes you, you probably think I like to pick on China, but I, uh, I, uh, this is an important story actually because I think that um, it's kind of a it's kind of interesting what's going on there with COVID nineteen and. You know, the rest of the world is trying to figure this out, too. Um, and uh, so, yeah, um, a lot of my I don't know about you, but a lot of my friends overseas are not happy about this situation because they feel like, well, you know, you have this three years ago, exact, almost exactly three years ago. In fact, it was exactly three years ago, January 2019. You know, they, a lot of people feel that China allowed their people to travel around the world and spread COVID-19. And now, you know, COVID-19 is exploding in China. You know, everybody's getting sick. And now they're saying, again, they're saying, hey, go, go travel, go, go on vacation, right? So, of course, a lot of people are upset. They're not happy about this because they feel like, hey, if you're going to do that, you should, you should you know, offer us some protection or something. Now, I know the situation's different for the world because many people have gotten vaccinated, you know, die email, but not everyone has done that, right? I mean, so I don't know. It's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, you didn't want, right? It's, but here it says a total mess in China's rural east as virus hits hard. Okay, now what's this word rule? What does rule mean? Yeah, this is a good word. What's the opposite of rule? Urban, right. So um, if you talk about a rural area, it means more of a, what, Xiangxia area, like a countryside. And urban, of course, means city. So why don't we say this word together, rule. Rule. Yeah, it's kind of a funny word to say, rule. Um, and then this word, urban. Urban. Okay. So rural east means the eastern part of, of China where it's more rural in the countryside, not the cities. Okay, so it says total mess in China's rural east as virus hits hard. Okay, the virus is hitting people hard. So here it says exhausted doctors working overtime, tests and treatments nowhere to be found, and under-resourced clinics inundated with patients. 
in Anhui, one of the east one of East China's poorest provinces, COVID-19 hit hard. Okay, so you know what exhausted means, right? Exhausted means, yeah, you know, sometimes we all feel exhausted, very tired. Why don't we say it together, exhausted? Exhausted. Now, of course, you know, we also say uh, for a, a different meaning for this word is on a car or motorcycle, you have the exhaust is, uh, you know, the exhaust pipe is the pai chi kuan, right? The, where the smoke comes out. We say the exhaust coming from your, 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 the smoke or whatever, the CO2 from your car. Okay. So exhausted doc doctors working overtime, you know, uh, what is it, jia ban, you know, overtime. Um, tests and treatments nowhere to be found. Okay, so that means that no one can find or that's not, it, it cannot be found. So we say tests and treatment nowhere to be found. It, yeah, there's, they're not there. They're not around. They're not available. Okay, I guess we could say unavailable, unavailable tests and treatments. But here they say tests and treatments nowhere to be found. Okay. So, and under-resourced clinics. Now, when we say the clinic, you know, cl clinic is like a zensuo, right? If we say it's under-resourced, what does that mean? Yeah, there's no or not enough resources, right? So if something is under-resourced, now what would at a clinic, a zensuo, what would be a resource? Like what? Well, money, but probably here they're talking about what? Medicine, yeah, or people. You don't have enough people, not enough work, nurses or doctors so, or medicine. So we say under-resourced. Why don't we say it together? Under-resourced. Under-resourced. Now, this is a good word. I don't know if we've learned this before, but inundated with patients. What does inundated mean? Overcrowded, overflowing. Okay. When I think, I, I think I especially think of the word overflowing, right? Um, uh, means it's it's... It's way too much. It's uh, with water. Yeah, I think inundate often gets associated with water. So when there's a flood, the, we could say the water inundated the city. It means that it was, or the water is, our house was inundated with water. But now that meaning has been expanded to mean when it's just, there's too much. It's, it's overflowing. So, for example, um, you could say our house was inundated with winds of mosquitoes or cockroaches, zhanglang, or whatever, inundated. So it just means there's too much. It's, 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 it's overflowing. Yeah. No, it could be. Usually it's just um, too much, but, yeah, it could be crowded. It could be crowded. I mean, it just means there's so much that it's overflowing. So, so here it means that there's too many patients. There's, is, there's too many patients for them to handle, inundated. It means kind of over, I think this, again, this is a good word. We could say overflowing with patients. Okay, you were going to say? No? Well, yeah, I don't know if we would say that, but you could say uh, he was inundated with um with uh, praise, tamme, or inundated with, um, when I was sick, you could say when I was sick, I was inundated with, uh, with letters from my friends or get well cards or whatever, you know. So it could be, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It just means there's a lot. What, sorry? Yeah, if, you, if there's too much. I guess, you know, here's a funny way of saying it. We could say, you know, abundance means we have a lot, right? An abundance of something. I have an abundance of money or I have an abundance of food. But then we have overabundance, okay? An overabundance of something means there's too much, okay? An overabundance of, yeah. Uh, sorry? Overwhelming, yeah. You, yeah, you could say if, if you're in a day with patients, it's overwhelming. There's too much. You. So here, actually, to use that word, we could say overwhelmed with patients, overwhelmed with patients, inundated with patients, overflowing with patients. All of those ideas mean that there's too much. You cannot deal with it, can't handle it. Okay, yes.
yeah, you could say unity. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously they're not going to crowd you out of the house. But yeah, it's there's too much. Too much, yeah. Yeah, so it could be crowded, but it might not be like, when I say, I mean, yeah, it's just over too much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, I guess if it was too crowded, we would say overcrowded, which technically could be used here too, okay? So why don't we say this word together, inundated. Inundated. Overflowing. Overflowing. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. And then overabundance. Overabundance. Now, of course, overabundance is a noun. We can't, we can't use that here. We can't say clinics overabundance with patients. We could say they have, they have an overabundance of patients. But, but uh, again, overabundance, slightly, I, I, you know, abundance is usually a, a good thing. It's a positive thing. So overabundance means almost like too much of a good thing. Um, but uh, overflowing, overwhelmed, inundated just means there's just too many. Okay. So inundated with patients. That these, this is all one big description in Anhui, one of East China's poorest provinces. It's funny, I didn't think Anhui was poor, but I guess it is. I also thought Anhui was more pros prosperous, but I don't know. I don't know China too well. Okay, so let's read this together. Exhausted doctors working overtime. Test and treatments. Nowhere to be found. And under-resourced clinics. Let's say it again. Under-resourced clinics. Inundated with patients. In Anhui, one of East China's poorest provinces. Poorest provinces. COVID-19 hit hard. Okay, it says, since China reversed its zero COVID policy last month, a whirlwind of cases has crammed hospitals with older patients and sparked a free-for-all over limited supplies of medicine. Okay, so there's some interesting words and expressions here. Okay, obviously, what does reverse mean? Yeah, to go the op opposite direction, right? In your car, you have reverse on your gears, right? You, you know the R on your, your car? Uh, you put in R and then the car goes backwards or, or should go backwards. Um, so yeah, why don't we say reversed? Reversed. Right. So if you say I put my car into reverse, no, no D. We say into reverse. That means you put it in that R, the reverse gear, and you can go backwards. But here it's a tong so To reverse means to go in the opposite direction. Right. First they said zero COVID, and now they're saying, oh, it's completely open. So uh, reversed its zero COVID uh, zero COVID policy last month. A whirlwind of cases. Now this is a very interesting expression. What is a whirlwind? Like a tornado. So you know what a tornado is, right? Uh, what is that? Zuan. Oh, Long Juan. Uh, oh, uh, Feng? Feng Juan, right. Not Long Juan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, so they actually say Long Juan. Okay. Like, uh, okay. Yeah. So we say, I want to say it again, tornado. Tornado. Whirlwind. Whirlwind. Because what does whirl mean? W H I R L. To spin around. You can say I'm he's whirling in circles. It means to spin. It's like spin, S P I N, to whirl. So when you of course if the wind is going in circles, we say world wind, right? So just like there's another thing we say, we say uh, whirlpool. Okay. Well, it's a washing machine, but but actually, it's it the the real meaning is in the water. If sometimes in a river or lake, the water starts spinning in a circle, right? And it could be very dangerous. You know, if your boat there it could get sucked into the whirlpool. 
So when you see that in the, in the river, in the water's moving in a circle, be careful. So we call that a whirlpool, P-O-O-L, pool, whirlpool. The water's moving in a, in a circle. So yeah, this idea of whirl. But whirlwind, you know, whirlwind, tornado, when I see the word tornado, I, it, it's dangerous and very serious. Whirlwind, if we say a whirlwind, it's almost like a less serious tornado. Like, I don't know if, if you've ever seen this, but if I know when I was in America in the desert, you know, Samo in the southwest, uh, sometimes you would see this air kind of just moving in circles. Um, it wasn't serious. You could actually go stand in it, but you'd see the air blowing in circles and all this dust and uh, bush, you know, leaves and grass be blowing in a circle. We call that a whirlwind. Tornado is very, very dangerous. It, it could kill you. But a whirlwind, I wouldn't say is that dangerous. You could just go there and look at it. But anyhow, it means that this, it, it's moving in a circle. So when we say a whirlwind of cases, what does that expression mean? Yeah, basically it means a lot. So, so if, 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 because it's kind of like, it's almost like a, it, this idea in my mind, it's a little bit like a little bit one, right? There's a, just a lot of cases and we're spinning in circles, right? So a whirlwind of cases, uh, what else we could say a whirlwind of, uh, what? Um, it just means, yeah, when we have a lot of something and it's kind of one, it's a sudden, maybe kind of sudden and it's a little bit chaotic and, Of what? Groupies. Uh, I don't know if we could say it that way. I don't know if we would use that to describe people. Um, it's more like circumstances, things that happen, like a whirlwind of cases, a whirlwind of problems. A world, yeah, just a lot of things happening at the same time. Okay. Anyhow, it's it's not important. The main thing is you know understand means a lot of something. Um, so why don't we say together whirlwind? So a whirlwind of cases has crammed hospitals with older patients. Cram, what would be another word for cram? Uh, sorry? Yeah, yeah, I would say jammed would be a better word. J-A-M-M-E-D, J-A-M-M-E-D. So jammed, crammed, filled, you know, I mean, any, any packed, P-A-C-K, packed, yeah. Those are, the, whole, the whole idea is there's lots of people uh, you know, jam, you know, so we have, oops, um, we have jammed, we have packed, yeah, all of these words mean you're, you know, ya chin shui, right? Okay, so one, so yeah, you could say, you know, like sometimes if you ride the, well, I, when I think of, uh, if you ever been to Tokyo and you ride the jie yun, right? at rush hour and they're jamming the people into packing the people into the trains. Okay, so yeah, it's it, we could use it that way. So why don't we say together, uh, crammed, crammed, jammed, jammed, packed, packed. Right, you know, in this Taiwan, we have this word gets used. We say a cram what? Cram school, bushiban, right? What are they doing? They're cramming the knowledge, the information into the students, right? Okay. So we call it a cram school. Bushiban uh, is a cram school. Yeah. Why don't we say it together? Cram school. Cram school. Yeah. It does sound negative. Yeah. I, I don't know. I would say a tutoring, you know, a tutoring service or tutoring school or after school service. I don't know. But but the common word is cram school. It's the word we use. Everyone uses the same word, even though it does it does sound negative, doesn't it? Cram school. I'm sure if you've ever studied at a bushiban, you would agree it's a little bit negative too, right? <laughs> Nobody wants to go to cram school. Um, yeah, I think if you said cram school in America, but America, it's not common in America. I mean, they have them, but they're not as common. So. Uh, but yeah, in America, we would say cram school also. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very unusual for American students to go to another school after the normal school. So they might have a tutor or they might have a, go to a, a lesson. You could say I have a, a, a science tutor or math tutor or I have math lessons or something like that. But it'd be very rare to go to a whole class or school after your normal school. 
like this, like a cram school. So yeah, it'd be quite unusual. Yeah, but I'm sure it exists somewhere. Um, it's funny, a lot of Asian American students, young people, their parents give them extra pressure. So after their um, normal school, they have to study Chinese or they have to study Korean or Japanese because their parents want them to learn the, their, their native language, right? So I, 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 I've heard many, um, many young people, like especially like Chinese or Taiwanese Americans, after their normal school, they still have to go study more Chinese after their school. So they have more study. Yeah. Okay, so they crammed hospitals with older patients and spark. Now, we've talked about this word many times. What does spark mean? To trigger, to cause. Maybe the easiest word is C-A-U-S-E, cause, you know. But we use the word, we've talked about this word many times before, to, you know, to cause, oops, that's an A, or trigger, oops, that's, sorry, that's an R, trigger. So, you know, trigger is on a, on a gun. When you shoot a gun, you pull the trigger. But to, to cause something, to trigger something, to spark something. Because a spark, how do you say spark in Chinese? Xing, yeah, it starts the fire, right? Yeah, so it starts something. So to spark, okay, now this is a very funny expression. A free-for-all over limited supplies of medicine. What does that word mean, a free-for-all? Right, so basically it means like, it's, first of all, it's luan, chaotic. But a free-for-all means everyone is trying to get what they can. There's no order. So, for example, you know, sometimes in, in anywhere like uh, Meiguo or Taiwan, when a Baihou Gongsa has a giant sale, you know, and everybody runs in and starts grabbing stuff, right? I want to buy, I want to get that. We say it's a free-for-all for that product, okay? Uh, I know sometimes in Taiwan, the, somebody will give out something for free. You know, they'll mean fame, give out some sort of li wu or something. And everybody's running in to get that li wu, that free item. So we say there was a free for all for that item or that product or that limited supply of medicine. So that's, it's a word, it's a, it becomes, a, it's a noun, a free for all, ming zi. But it, yeah, it's this idea that everyone's going crazy to get something. They're, everyone's trying to get it. Yeah. No, it doesn't mean free. F but up for grabs means it's free. But but free for all just means of it's every, there's no order. Everybody's trying to get it. Everyone's just scrambling to get it. Okay. Now he just used an expression that's kind of interesting. It's another common expression. If you say something is up for grabs, it means it's free. Okay, it's free. So if someone says, "Hey, um, is that um, is that is that water? Can I take some a bottle of that water?" And you say, "Sure, it's up for grabs." It means you can take it. It's me and Feda. Say bin. Okay. Or you say, oh, do I need to pay for that, those, that, those cookies? No, they're up for grabs. Just take them. So it means it's free. Just say, bien na. Okay? So why don't we say together, up for grabs. Up for grabs. Okay, but it's a little bit different. This is just everyone's trying to get it. So why don't we say free for all. Free for all. Okay. So yeah, everybody's trying to get this medicine. I'm sure they have to pay, but they probably have to pay for it. But they, they're all trying to get it. Yeah. Um, instead of saying, maybe we could say everyone is scrambling. They're scrambling to get the limited supplies of medicine. You could say he's scrambling to find uh, tickets for his airplane, for his flight to America. Everyone is scrambling to buy... Um, to buy toilet paper, yes. Yeah, during COVID-19, everyone was scrambling for toilet paper or scrambling to buy toilet paper. We could, <coughs> sorry, we could say there was a free-for-all for toilet paper at the Jialefu. It means everyone was trying to buy, you know, Wei Zhengzhi or whatever, yeah. Okay, does everybody understand that? Okay, 
So let's let's read this then. Since China reversed reversed its zero COVID policy last month. A whirlwind of cases, let's say it again, a whirlwind of cases has crammed hospitals with older patients and sparked a free-for-all over limited supplies of medicine. Okay, let's go on. It says, the country's wide wealth gap has also fueled health care disparities between cities and rural areas with under, sorry, underdeveloped regions having a chronic lack of doctors, equipment, and expertise. Okay, so there's a, there's a few things here to talk about. First of all, what is a wealth gap? Does anyone know? First of all, a gap is what? It's like a space, right? Yeah. So, so you know, any country, there's a gap, right, between the richest people and the poorest people. There's a gap, a space between them, right? Now, in some countries, there's a very big wealth gap, right? The rich people are very rich and the poor people are very poor. In some countries, like I think Taiwan, I mean, although that gap is getting bigger, but... Um, the gap is maybe a little bit smaller between the very wealthy and the very poor. Uh, and, you know, it, it depends. Some countries, again, we say wealth gap, okay? Why don't we say together wealth gap? Wealth gap. Okay, so China's wide wealth gap or big wealth gap has fueled healthcare disparities. Now, fueled is like the word we said sparked, caused, triggered, right? Fueled, same idea. To fuel something means to make it you know, worse, you know, make it bigger, okay? Because fuel is like, uh, you know, uh, uh, chio, right? Uh, chio, you know, put fuel in the car, it makes the car go, right? So if you fuel something, it means you make it bigger or grow, okay? So it has fueled healthcare disparities. Now, normally this word is uh, with a Y, right? T-Y, disparity. This is a good word. I don't think we've learned this before. What does disparity mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's like the word gap. It's like the difference, the gap between something. So, for example, you could say uh, there's a great disparity between my generation and the younger generation in, I don't know, something. <laughs> I don't know, money or I, I don't know what. It could be anything. So it means a gap, a big difference. Um, or between two countries or between two generations or between two people. Okay? It means a, a big difference or gap. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Uh, we use this word quite often, uh, disparity between, oh, we could say there's a great disparity between Taipei and Kaohsiung uh, in the environment or in the, I don't know, it could be anything, right? So anyhow, let's say it together, disparity. Disparity. So again, this means a healthcare, the difference in healthcare between cities and rural areas. There's a big gap. There's a big difference, okay? With underdeveloped regions, now of course underdeveloped means it's not, it's not developed enough, right? It's underdeveloped, okay? Uh, it used to be a long time ago, many people said Eastern Taiwan was underdeveloped. You know, if you went to Huarian or Taitong or Ilan, it was less developed or underdeveloped. Now if you say less developed, that might be okay. I mean, it might be they don't want to develop. Maybe it's nice because it's not developed. But underdeveloped has a negative idea. It's folding. It means that there's not enough resources there. So why don't we say together, underdeveloped. Underdeveloped. So underdeveloped regions having a chronic lack of these things, like doctors, equipment, and expertise. What does that mean, expertise? Yes, that's a good way of putting it. Special knowledge, special skill, okay? Now, I think many of you have an expertise in something. Now, that might not be in science or math, but maybe you can say she has good expertise in raising children, right? 
That's an expertise, a knowledge, a skill in raising children. Or cooking, you know, how to make food. Uh, expertise in cooking Chinese food. Or expertise in, in uh, fixing a car. It could be anything that you have a special knowledge or skill and we say expertise. So why don't we say it together, expertise. Expertise. Now, when we look at that word, expertise, what do we see here? Expert, right? Zhuanjia, right? Expert. So expertise would be a special knowledge or skill of something. And again, it doesn't have to be some super technical skill. It could be anything like cooking food or raising children or I don't know, whatever. Okay, even driving a car, you know. <laughs> um, why don't we say it one more time? Expertise. expertise. Okay, now here we have this, and I think we've talked about this before, but a chronic lack. Lack, of course, is like tria, right? Tria, you, you, tria fa. Okay, what is chronic? Yeah, long term means it comes over and over and over and over again. If someone is chronically sick, it means they're always sick. They never get well. They just keep staying, they stay sick. You know, someone says, I have a chronic cold, got mal. Seems like I never can get rid of it. I always, it continues and continues and continues. Um, there are many chronic diseases, right, that they never go away. Uh, diabetes, uh, what is that, Tang Nao being, right? Diabetes is uh, chronic, right? It doesn't go away. Um, some people have chronic heart disease or whatever. So why don't we say together, chronic, chronic Right, but we can say other things can be chronic, like a chronic lack of something, chiefa. But you could also say, I think I, I joked it, you know, I used, maybe I still am sometimes, I was chronically late for this class, right? I'm always late. Okay, so that becomes a futsu, right? Chronically, okay, uh, with an A-L-L-Y, chronically. He is chronically late for the class. Okay, so yeah, this is a good word. Why don't we say together, chronic? Chronic, chronically, chronically. Okay, so let's say let's read this then. The country's wide wealth gap. Wealth gap has also fueled fueled health care disparities. Disparities between cities and rural areas with underdeveloped regions having a chronic lack of doctors, equipment, and expertise. Expertise. Right. So someone might say, what's your expertise in? You say, well, my expertise is in, you know, uh, speaking English, you know, or yeah, yeah. Okay. So now here, of course, we could say between urban and rural areas. That would be okay. Urban and rural areas. That'd be fine. Yeah. Discrepancy is more about... Um, Something that should be, but it's not, it's incorrect. Uh, it means, for example, let's say, uh, I'll give you a good example. Like every day, uh, most businesses, they have to, they have their receipts, right? Their fa piao. And then they, they have how much money is in the, in the thing. And maybe you look at your total, maybe your total is, you know, $550 on your receipts, but you look in the, in the, in the, cashier the red and you're look there's five hundred and forty five dollars and you're like there's a discrepancy here that means this does not match this so it's it's like they do not match so so it doesn't add up right it doesn't match it's not the way it should be that's a that's a good word um i think i'm explaining this right or is it discrepancy sorry i sorry yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let me start all over. Yeah. This C-R-E, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, it's a long word. Discrepancy. So, but it could also be like 
if, um, you know, in court, fa yuan, right? Maybe this witness says, uh, he left, he says, oh, I left my house at 5 o'clock. But then this person says, well, no, uh, we left at 5.05. .05. Or you look at the camera and it says 5.10. You say, well, there's a discrepancy between what he said and what they said. Or his what he said and what the records show. So it means there's a difference. There's a it doesn't match. It doesn't it doesn't go together. So yeah. So why don't we say together discrepancy? Discrepancy. And this is a means, so it's a noun. You can say there is a discrepancy between what he said and what she said, or between this number and that number. Okay. It's a good word. It's it's actually a very good word. Discrepancy. Um yeah. So you can see disparity, discrepancy. There's some similar kind of ideas going through there. Okay. Okay, so that's a photo caption. So it says here, when COVID-19, when the COVID-19 wave hit in the second half of last month, doctors in Anhui rapidly ran out of diagnostic kits and treatments. Nobody tested for it. So we didn't know if we were positive or not, said Xiao from a village near Bengbu, a city of 3.3 million people. Okay, so um, it's been a total mess, he said. Things were better when the government kept us all locked down. <laughs> That's pretty amazing that he said that, right? Because in China, people were kang yi, they were upset because of the lockdowns. Now he said things were better when the government kept us locked down. So uh, COVID-19 wave hit in the second half of last month. They rapidly ran it. What's, what's a diagnose? What's di this comes from what word? Diagnose, right? And when you diagnose something, what does that mean? Yeah. So am I saying, is, that, is there an E there? Diagnose. Oh, sorry. Right, 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 right. Yeah, sorry. I'm uh, too too early in the morning for me. Uh, uh, didn't have coffee. No, I, I actually did diagnose. So, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's correct. Diagnose. Okay. So if the doc, if you go to the doctor and he will diagnose your sickness, he'll say he'll check you and he'll say, oh, you have uh, you have the flu, or you have COVID nineteen or whatever. Okay, so and then that's a dongzi, and then a diagnosis is a mingzi. You can say the doctor gave me my diagnosis, or I received a diagnosis from the doctor. So this word often gets used with iliao with medicine. The doctor's job is to diagnose your sickness, okay? To tell you what's wrong with you, okay? Or give you a diagnosis. But you can also diagnose other things, right? If there's something wrong with your car or your motorcycle and you go to the shop and the guy that looks at your engine, he says, oh, you, uh, you, you're, you need to replace this. This part is broken. That's also a diagnosis. He diagnosed your engine problem, okay? Your car problem or your motorcycle problem. So if there's a, a, a problem, a mao bing or something, and someone tells, the, give, tells you what's wrong, they don't tell you, it's not the solution. It's what's wrong. They tell you what's wrong or what's going on. So that's a diagnosis. Now here we say diagnostic kits um, is another xing long si, but that means it's a kit to, di to, to diagnose your sickness. Now what are they, you know in Taiwan we have the what? Quice, quice, sire, or whatever. You know, the quick, the quick test, right? I think that's what this is. It's a diagnostic test or kit for COVID-19. <clears throat> you, you take it, and then you know. But we use this word to diagnostic. Uh, it's, it's also a, like a xinglongsi. It means a kit for diagnosis. Did everybody understand that? Okay. So let's say this together. To diagnose. To diagnose. Diagnosis. Diagnosis, diagnostic, diagnostic. Okay, so they ran out of these kits. That means <laughs> you don't know if someone's sick or not. So it says here nobody tested for it, so we didn't know if we were positive. You know, positive here means yang xing, right? 
um, from a village. Okay, it's been a total mess. Yeah, so anyhow, this is a big problem. Okay, so let's read this, and then I think we're out of time. Um, when the COVID-19 wave hit in the second half of last month, doctors in Anhui rapidly ran out of diagnostic kits and treatments. Let's say it again, diagnostic kits and treatments. Nobody tested for it. So we don't know if we were positive or not. Said Xiao from a village near Bengbu, a city of 3.3 million people. It's been a total mess, he said. Uh, let's say it again. It's been a total mess, he said. Things were better when the government kept us all locked down. Okay. Now, if you say it's a total mess, it means, you know, right? It means it's just, yeah, it's a mess. Um, everything's, yeah. But uh, what was going to say here? Yeah, um, I, I forgot to mention, you know what a kit is, right, though? A kit could be anything that you, yeah, it's like a case. It's like a, it's like something you use for something, right? Like, for example, um, most, it, many, like uh, in your car or maybe outside, people often have a first aid kit. Right, if you get injured, your show shangli, you can open up and there's like band-aids and medicine, you can use it. So it's like a little package, a little box or something like that you can use for something. We say a medical kit or first aid kit or repair kit or anything like that. It could be big, it could be small. Uh, that's more like a 72 hour bag. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's military. No, it could be like a package or something, but often it's a, in a box, yeah. And of course, rapidly means quickly, right? They quickly, they ra rapidly ran out of something, yeah. Okay, any questions? Any final questions? Um, okay, good. Well, uh, I think we're meeting again next week, right? Before uh, the year of the rabbit, so yeah. Okay, we'll see you next week then, yeah. Yeah. No, distinguish means I, I, I know the difference between something. I can distinguish. But discrepancy means they don't match. They do not match each other. Yeah. So, yeah.